We have a lovely service last night, and I'm sure we'll have this off to do this. It's lovely to have you with us again, Dawn. Shall we start our service singing together in two, one, four? <coughs> Welcome, loving spirits, from your home above. Two, one, four.
great power of our universe, whom we call our Father God, we enter thy house, a place that has been built so that men and women from all walks of life, whatever colour, caste or creed, can come together in thy name and to worship thee both in spirit and in truth. And so this afternoon we have come that we may build here the power that thy presence will be with us and will be felt by us. And that the power will be built so that people will benefit. <coughs> so that our thoughts can travel to those in need, both in health, mentally and physically. We have come to thank Thee for the gift of living, because we know that without Thee there would be naught here, but because Thy presence has touched this earth, we are aware that Thou art God. We have come that we may help to bring about a great peace upon our earth, not only by our thoughts, but by being influenced and moved by Thee. That the ministering angels who come from Thee can walk our earth, spreading seeds of love and kindness that will be harvested by those who follow us, and there will be peace on earth and goodwill towards all men. There are those here who have cried for help from you, and those who have been guided to come here today. And we pray that the ministering angels will inspire us so that we can speak words of comfort to them, and that each one will go away feeling uplifted and knowing that their prayer has been heard. So into thy hands this day do we commend the service and pray that what will be said or done, that it will be said only to the honour and to the glory of thy name. Amen. Amen. of men and of angels and have not love, we are become a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envies not. Love is not puffed up. Though we have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though we have all faith 
so that we could remove mountains and have not love, we are nothing. Love seeketh not our own. Love is not to be perverted. Love thinketh no evil. Love openeth all things, endureth all things, rejoicing in the truth. Prophecies may fail, terrors may cease, knowledge may vanish away, but love never faileth, nor ceaseth, nor vanishes. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, good do, good, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute. And that is out of the Bible, of course. So. We are now going to sing together <coughs> hymn 339. Now we're singing at this hymn, we sing it from Will of Rest. 339. No other freedom we than truth the Lord should plead. <coughs> we create. Equally did we create evil itself. And yet we know that the greatest power is the power of goodness. 
in some mysterious way that we do not understand, there is a divine law that cannot be broken. There is a divine law that even when death comes, when the hopelessness of death seems to be there, we recognize this moment, this tremendous moment, of this movement of one's self, one's consciousness, away from a physical body that has died, to move on, living, moving, and having its being in life itself. So we have to try, ladies and gentlemen, to understand that there is a purpose for this earth, and there is a purpose for you and I, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and it was God who said, let there be light. And we understand light to be life. Oh, I know that most people fear death, and most people, when they have loved ones, not only fear it, but dread the consequences of death. And yet we realize from time immortal there has always been something that's told us that death was not the end. A little while ago, uh, a lady who is a vice president of our church, her mother was um, very, very ill. And um, she asked me if I would go and see her, and I said, of course. A very dominating character uh, was her mother. Uh, she was at one time a headmistress, so you can imagine what type of lady she was, and a tough one. And uh, she was the type that even uh, after retirement, she insisted on going back to take on those who needed extra tuition and push them off. She couldn't tolerate laziness or anything like that. Uh, I suppose really uh, she dominated her uh, family, but at the same time, they had a tremendous love and respect. Well, um, whenever I used to preach and um, uh, speak, she was always sitting there. If I quoted from the Bible, she used to come to me and say, you know you misquoted it. doesn't mean that at all. She and I used to have arguments, and I used to say, well, one day we will all know the answer. It doesn't look as though you and I will never agree on anything. But she was that type. She was a spiritualist, but deep down, were those things that she knew and believed, and you couldn't move her. Well, I went to see her, and of course she was so ill that they were really uh, keeping her uh, drugged, um, that uh, she seemed to be unconscious. I sat there talking. And all at once, as I was sitting by the bedside with her daughter there, uh, her grandson came, his name was grandson, and all at once I saw a man there. And I recognized that it was Mrs. Middleton's husband, that's the uh, mother uh, and father to the girl, the lady that's in our church. And not that I'd ever met him in this world, but I have met him in the other world, and I recognized him. He had spoken to me several times. He had completely ignored me. He completely ignored um, uh, uh, his daughter and went straight to the grandson. And as he came in, he was not a spiritualist, and uh, the grandfather just came to him and loved him and moved as he moved towards the mother that was lying there, the grandmother was lying there in this unconscious state. I noticed that he, as he bent to kiss his grandmother, so did this spirit, that was his grandfather, kiss at the same time. And so he was waiting for that moment to put emotion into this young man, so that the mother would feel the emotion from him. Well, I thought I won't say anything about this, until the boy, then the young man, said, would you like a coffee? I'll go and fetch you one from the, the sort of cafe they have in the hospital. And when he went, uh, his sister arrived, and we just chatted. She went off to him, and I turned to his mother and said, Your mother now is safe. Your father has come forth. 
and she won't be bothered. Isn't it lovely to know she's not passing away alone? So we came away and I said, I don't think you're going to see your mother again. I think this is the last, but don't tell your grandchildren what your son or daughter. Let them accept it as it is. And of course, in the early hours of the morning, she passed away. What do I mean? Ladies and gentlemen, look what those miss that don't understand what we understand. Look when we are looking at someone and we know they're passing and we are saying, God, I don't think we can stand them to suffer any longer. Let them pass. And yet if only we had vision to see for one moment what really is taking place. Look how wonderful to know there was someone else there. That though we couldn't get through to them as we think physically in any way, there was some way that the spirit could get through. And isn't this, doesn't this change our life from realizing that there is this, this sort of emptiness that one considered death to be? <coughs> this sort of something of waiting, wondering what was next to know what is next. This brings to us such a reality that we know without question that there is a God. But not a God that is crucified on a cross, but a God that was within, that enabled that man to go through that experience and come out of it the richer, the greater, the purer, the more loving. For what was the greatest thing in the life of Jesus? His miracles? Oh no, yes. The wonderful things he said? Oh no, yes. Because had he have never returned from the grave, had he not approved his own teachings, he would have been forgotten. Like many of us are forgotten, not at all shortly after we passed over. He life goes on. But Jesus knew this. He knew that the only way that he could prove the power of God was with his own life. And he knew that he had to come back and prove that life was eternal, even though he'd proven by miracles and all sorts of things it was insufficient. Because they all denied it. They all said, no, he hasn't come back. That in moments of stress, when you've done so much, have you not said to yourself, why is that a secret? Why has this all happened to me? Why am I being held down like this? <coughs> Here you take the greatest person in history who has dominated our lives for 2,000 years. Dominated them because of his character, not of his miracles but of something else, ladies and gentlemen. When his body was weak, when he gave up, did he not at that splendid moment when he said, why hast thou forsaken me? And then at the very end, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That, to me, was a supremacy of spirit, because that was the moment that when all of us failed, we all feel bitter at times. We all feel an envy at times. We all feel something against something in life. But here was a man that rose above that, that has found the spirit that has made this world go on, the spirit that has risen at times of great need. And isn't that what we need at the present time? Do we all need to feel that war and these things of war are the most important things in life? Should we not be going to the very heart of the power of the Spirit? Could it not the Spirit of life? Was it not what Jesus said when he said, ladies and gentlemen, destroy my body if you will, but I will return in three days. He knew that the greatest power in the universe was the spiritual power. And that's the way we should be now. We shouldn't be talking of prayer. We shouldn't be talking of these things, but we should do something about it. 
We should not be sort of just waiting for moments, but building our relationship with the greatest power of all, the power of God that lies deep within our being. And if spiritualists cannot believe that, then they're not spiritualists. Because spiritualism is about God's power. It's about the greatest power in the universe. It's about the power that even death cannot destroy. It's the power that enables us to move on beyond death. And your greatest triumph, and your greatest triumph, is when you are faced with situations that drag you down, you don't ask God to remove the boldness from your path. You ask God to give you the strength to be able to pass through those experiences. It's to be able to rise and not allow ourselves to be chained to this earth, to be chained to these things. It is for us to be released from it. For us to triumph over death. It's to triumph over these things. And we can, if we don't allow ourselves to be pulled down to it. To release ourselves and to be part of this great power that we know is there. Ladies and gentlemen, at the service of this lady, I tell you about, I took her, uh, <laughs> her funeral service. As I was doing it, I knew she wanted me to read the Bible. And I had no intentions of reading. I intended to read something else because we always had a battle over this. Could I find another service? Everything I picked up, there was something wrong with it. And in the end, I decided to read um, Spiritual Gifts and Corinthians. And I thought I would talk about this and talk about her because she was a very fine lady. And people re greatly respected her. Dominating character. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I made three mistakes in reading that. And I realized when I was making, I apologized. I have to keep apologizing. I'm totally sorry. You know, I, that is, I didn't know what that isn't correct. You know, that word that I just said, isn't correct. <coughs> and at the end of it, I realized what I'd done. The family just absolutely were shaken by this because they realized that their mother would have been there and said, that's wrong, you know, just like the teacher does. Say it again. You see here, and do it again. She dominated that service even though she passed over. She had no intentions of letting anyone believe she was dead. Because you can't die no matter how you try. And she dominated from the other side that service. Be death? <laughs> There's no such thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of the Spirit has been proving the existence of the soul in people ever since life began. And there are still those who still deny it. And we'll never find the answer to world peace until we can see in all people God, somewhere there, wherever it is, still with him. And we have got to go out into the high bays and the byways. No longer must spiritualism just be in little, little groups like that. It must break these chains. We must not limit the power of the Spirit. We must break through and take our message wherever it is needed. We must sort the people and go out and give it to them. That they too may find what you and I have found. Hope and not despair. Love not hate, and to know that love never dies, it comes through from this higher world. So ladies and gentlemen, don't let us get bogged down with wars and thoughts and feelings of wars. We have to face a situation, of course we do, but as spiritualists, 
we not pray that other people will fight our war for them, but we enlist to the great army of the Spirit, that we may be moved by the Spirit, that we may be helped by the Spirit, that we may be able to play our part to know that each of us can do something by loving and caring and being. I thought at the beginning part of this year <laughs> that I was going to pass over. Too, because I was quite very ill. <laughs> I couldn't do anything for myself at all. I needed help and I had wonderful friends who cared for me and looked after me. And it was so wonderful to see that I received letters from all over the world. People say, oh, I keep praying that God won't have you over there. We still need you here. Oh, and that made me even better. You know, <laughs> put that sort of spirit in me. I'm not coming, you see. <coughs> and then I look back on the moment that it happened. And I realized that then I knew that God was there. I didn't at the time. I didn't realize that. But I woke up one morning and couldn't use my hand and my leg was giving me trouble, but I couldn't move it at all. It was gone completely. And I had a journey to make from Torbay to Weymouth, which was uh, uh, a distance of 90 miles. And I got to be there. I couldn't even open the car door to get someone to open it for me. And so I got into the car after they had opened it and got the young man to started up because I couldn't even start it up. It's my right hand. And they said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to make this journey. And they said, you'll be killed. I said, well, if I am, it's just too bad. At least I can make the effort. I don't remember anything at all. It's following me, I can remember. Two people in a car were came from St. Helens, and they followed me until I got there. And they said, you know, the miraculous thing happened. We were worried because we knew that if he stopped by lights, his, his car may not start again. And every time he came to any lights that were red, immediately he got there, they went green. And by the time we got there, they were red again. We had to keep catching him up all the time. And I don't remember, ladies and gentlemen, from the time I left Torbeck until I reached Wayne. I don't remember ever stopping or starting the car or anything. And when I got out, I just collapsed. I think God was there. I think we have those moments. We don't understand it. But yet we're filled with a power that seems to help us to get there. And when I got there, of course, I had many friends there who really helped me and cared for me, and I was able to eventually uh, go back home. But only after three weeks of great care. But, ladies and gentlemen, I believe God knows. This supreme power from whence all blessings flow is always with us. And you know, there's a wonderful story you about, have you noticed that, the uh, uh, two uh, lots of footsteps. Have you read that one in the poem? Isn't it wonderful? When he said, you know, why is it that when I'm in the, the most despair, there's only one set of footprints? And the voice that spoke said, but that was when we carried you. And when I read that, I thought of me in that car. I felt that God Helped. And how many times have you been helped and failed to recognize it because you haven't bothered to look for it? And that's where we fail. Sometimes have you found that you've needed something and the next morning in the post something has come and it's cheered you up? <coughs> and what about those moments when the telephone's not rang for days. And then all at once it 
rang and someone said, I was thinking about you. And I want to tell you something. This made our day. Just as coincidence. <laughs> Look again. And you'll find, ladies and gentlemen, that we're never, ever left alone. God is there. And I believe God is with the world right now. And I believe the power of the Spirit is still the greatest power in the universe. Will help us. I have no doubts about that. Because I know, ladies and gentlemen, that the spirit power that is here with spirit intelligences are here because it's necessary for you and I to know we never walk alone. And God is always with us. And those we have thought are dead <coughs> are alive walking with you and I. The invisible world is the reality. It was Paul who said, the things which are visible will pass away, but the things which are invisible live forever. Now take that as my message to you. And don't fear. Smile at life. And life will smile with you. Don't grieve. Don't let your hearts be broken. Keep them bravely ticking on. <coughs> and you'll get through. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 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 well, I'm
Do you know Maggie? <coughs> what did she say? She can't say that. She can't say, can't say, say. say. I'll find it for you. <coughs> Are you on a visit at the moment, madam? No. Pardon? No. You live here, do you? If you do, do you have, or have you had visitors coming and going very recently? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Haven't you had someone away from you uh, that has had to come via London to get to you from the south coming up the country here? I said, no. hold on. Yes. I seem to get someone there that's giving me the name of Maggie, who keeps saying that she's Maggie, or Margaret, but some would call her Maggie. It's Margaret. She is a, a lady that's there, and I rather felt that her husband had passed over prior to her um, uh, uh, passing, but there didn't seem to be a great deal of difference in time, probably a year or two years or something like that, but she keeps giving to me the name of Jones, and I felt, where are you? You do know someone named Margaret. Margaret Would they yeah. call her Maggie? Not that I know. You, could you find out if there was someone that called her Maggie? Yes. And could her husband have passed away prior to her? And had he been ill for a little while? Yes. And then when he went, it seemed as though she didn't go very long afterwards. It's as though, I won't months. say she, pardon? A matter of months. A matter of months. Well, she's there, you see yes. here, and uh, she's just popped her head over, and she says she's met your mother on the other side, yes. and that you'd have discussions together yes. um, if they could come back, what she would say, and she would bring you news from your family. Do you yes. understand that? Yes. Now then, she's met your mother on the other side, and she says you're not a bit like your mother, uh, because you are a little bit more definite than your mother. She seems to have a reserve with her. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. But she says you've got the colouring of your mother. Yes. Is that right? Yes. But she hasn't got such a large face as you, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah, yes, you see. <laughs> You're fine. That's what's there. You can accept this. But she's got a sister with her. Because... Yes. She keeps on saying there's a sister there. No. Yes, it is. It is she's her own sister, isn't it? And that passed away very young. Yes. Tom? Yes. Well, she's got a sister with yes. her, you see here. And she keeps talking also of, is this Helen? Helen, Helen. And was it someone they called Nell? Nelly, yes. that's right, yes. because that's what they're giving to me. Do you understand yes. that? Yes. And do you know Eileen, someone named Eileen? Yes. There's passed over, I mean. Yes. 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 They wish to be remembered to you. Yes. All right? Yes. And uh, you visited a house sometime of where there was a flat somewhere in a house. Is this correct? Oh, I don't know. Do you go to a house now where there's a flat? And it's a, but it's a person's house, but they've got a flat there. No, I can't tell you. All right, I'll find you, so don't worry about it. They wish to be remembered to you, you see here. Yes. And um, <coughs> you've been looking at some wedding photographs. Yes. And you've found your own, haven't you? Yes. And you looked at yourself and you've smiled and said, look at me now, I couldn't get in those clothes now. Come on, be honest about yes, it. Yes. yes? And as you've looked at it, you have seen and said, although that was the fashion at that time, it isn't too bad now. Come on. Yes. yes. And there was a lot of people on one, and nearly all of them had passed away. Yes. yes. And you found a lady there named Mary, because she says she was on the road behind your mother. Yes, you do. You better go through it again. <laughs> and then apologise to her. But nevertheless, they're there. Oh, and someone they used to call Paul. Polly. And she was sister to Liza. Or to... Oh, no, I don't remember. Yes, you do. It's there in the past. It was either Liza or Liza, but it was, could have been that sound that was there. Hold on to it for a moment, will you? Now, 
Do you go somewhere where you stay, where there has been a fire? Have you been involved in a fire? I go very near to where there was a fire. Now, you're sure about that, are you? Yes. Now, if this is so, is there a flat somewhere there? And is there, have you been there recently? I haven't actually been in, but I've passed it. Really All right. Late. But it's somewhere there you go, you see here. But I could see a flat, you see, yeah. for the house. Yeah. Do you understand that? And I saw a fire. Yeah. And someone that wishes to be remembered to you, uh, that is here now, trying to get a contact, you see here. And they are saying, that uh, you've no need to worry about yourself because you'll always be looked after right to the end. You. Have you got that? Yes. They want you to know that. And there's a gentleman here that must be your husband then, and he's saying you should be happy now because there are <coughs> happy times that you remember at this time of the year. Yes. Is this correct? Yes. And when you set out, you knew that, or hoped, that you would get a link to remind you of this period. Do you understand that? That's why they come to see you. All right? And they want me to ask you if you did have the tree cut down by the door. You've got a tree by the door of a house. No. A tree. Isn't it an ivy, an ivy, what do you call it? Um, an ivy tree, is it? Um, it's got prickles on it. Holly. Is it a holly tree that doesn't have berries? Doesn't have berries? <coughs> it's no berries on it anywhere. But it's by a door. And it's a double, it's a, a, a bay window, it's a bay window. Uh, and a big window at the front. And it's got a drive to it. Have I got Norton Road? Do you know Norton or Norton? Norton then you visited a house in Norton Road. Uh, Pardon? Yes. Yeah. And there was a holly tree there. Possibly, I don't, I'm not sure. Will you go past? Mm. And apologise. Will you go past? It should be come down. There was something about the tree by the door, and it was in Norton or Norton Road. Yes. Do you understand that? And that it was something you should know. I'm told to tell you you'll go on to the end. There's my lovely here. And that you'll fight all the way. There'll be no sort of you're losing any energy. She'll be fighting all the way. There's not another here. You. So I should keep that dignity you've got on you. <laughs> that would probably help you on. You all understand that. And uh, do take care. Uh, they're staying with me, you see, because they think that they've got you now. <laughs> and uh, they've um, just tried to hold on there. But they send their best wishes and love. Thank you. And your mother says, just happy birthday, just happy birthday. And she says, you'll understand. <coughs> Thank you very much. It does make sense, doesn't it? It does. That's fine. Good. I want to come here to the lady. Are you in fur or is it velvet? Well, it's sort of velvet. Pardon? It's sort of velvet, yes. It's a sort of velvet. I must be sure about this. It's a, it's a husband that I want that's trying to get in touch with his wife. And he's building there. And I keep on hearing Betty. Who is Betty? Do you know a Betty that's passed over? I can't think of one. Could mean. your husband be on the other side? No. Hmm. The lady through, this, past this gentleman here, through there. Yes. Yeah. Could your husband be on the other side? Now hold on, who is Betty? Would you know a Betty that's passed over that would be Elizabeth that they would call yes, Betty? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes. Right. Now then. At Christmas, did you have someone coming and going to your house? No, we weren't here at Christmas. Pardon? We wasn't here at Christmas. Were we you away? away? Yes. Were the people to and fro? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Yeah. Coming and going, like yeah. visitors and That's this sort right. of thing. Yeah. Is this correct? Yes. I'm sorry I got it over there, but I was told I was wrong, you see here, and that I would get it in my next contact. Um, now, I want to tell you about, I'll come back to you in, in a moment. I want to bring this to you, you see, because there's a gentleman here that said 
that he was with his wife at Christmas, you see, spiritually, and that they were where people were coming and going, and there were people all the time around. Do you understand that? And you were at home. You felt as though you were at home here. And um, it's there. But you had memories of something happening when you were away a while ago. And it seemed as though illness or something must have come. So you remember times that were good, but those good times held memories of things happening to you where illness and passings uh, were concerned. And so they were with you this time so that nothing was going to happen to you. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. Good. They tell me that you're very up and down at the moment. Yes. You're down more than you're up. And you said, if this doesn't do me any good, I don't know what else is going to do me any good. Because you had to just get away, you just had to feel that you have got something, and you just had to be able to let yourself go. And although you were able to do something about it, it still held you that you just wondered, what's waiting for me when I get back? Come on, be honest about it. That's right, that's what's here. But it hasn't been too bad, no, you see, it here, has it? No. Because they have said they did as much as they possibly could by shaking someone up and saying it's about time you did more for yourself than what you've been doing. That's Come on. That's right. Yes? That was the reason you had to get away, you know it was. And when you got back, you thought, now what's waiting? You see here. And you just checked on everything and things hadn't been as well as you thought. And you thought to yourself, if I'd have known that, I'd have even had a better time than I had when I was there. But you couldn't find out, you dared find out either, you see here, because you were afraid of the worst. Well, the spirit we were going through all this with you. And there was one little group where you were, and another little group back here. And between them, you see, they were passing these messages off to tell you where they could to have a good time and put everything behind you. Do you understand that? Good girl. Now you've been involved in something that's some... Um, uh, a bit being confusing there because you've been somewhere of where things, I'm not talking about the particular situation that I have, but you've been a little hurt over something that's happened to you very recently as well. But they are saying to me, look to the hills and remember you have memories and blessings that will help you to get over the cloudy times. All right? Good girl. Um, You've got a very lovely, colourful scarf. It looks very much to me like, um, you know, uh, like the jacket of all colours that Joseph had. And you've got something that's very bright and brilliant with all different colours that you wear, that you've got it now. Yes. Do you understand yes. that? Well, they brought you on to match it from the other side. And where you've got a lot of purples and bright and green colours in this, this is all blues, because they said you need a little blue around you. All right? Yes. So they brought you that from the other world as a gift for you. All right? So we want you to be there. Oh, and I'm told to tell you that uh, from now onwards, the tree that's beginning in the house I'm talking about, a plant in the house, yes. something to, it's already getting flowers on it, and they're pink, you see here. So it looks a form of cacti plant, or that evergreen, whatever you call them, I don't know. Pink. You're going to have all kinds of colours all through the year. <coughs> will you remember that? Yeah. And that will cheer you up. Yeah. All right? Good. Keep your hair <laughs> and keep smiling. Oh, George sends his best wishes to you. Uh, Do you remember George? Pardon? Father in law. Your father. Oh, well, he's come along with someone <coughs> named Eve or Eve. Um, I have someone. It's uh, at the back there, and it's to do with Bill. Does someone there know the name of William Powell? Uh, my granddad was William, and my name is Powell. Oh, all right. Now then, who was Bill? Who did, was, well, did they call William yes, Bill? William right, if so, that is what's just come through. It's a gentleman, but he's rising up here, so he's trying to get to his full, I was going to say his full strength, his full height, you see there. And uh, he's quite nicely broad across the shoulders here. 
It's the only broad part of him, I'm afraid. He's not corpulent in any way. But he's got a nice way with him. And he's got a person with him that was blind. And it's a lady. And she went blind before she passed over. That was his wife. That was his wife. They come together, you see here. And um, as they have done so, they brought you a tea caddy. A tea caddy? A tea caddy. You know the old tea caddies were tin, tea, tin, yes. Tin, oh well you know what it is, don't you? I've been going on forever trying to say what it is. It's a tea, tin caddy, a tea caddy. And uh, you, it was a very old one. And it was one that was passed down. Because I'll tell you why it was passed down. Because it was never used for tea. But it was used for coins. Putting coins in. And it has something to do with your grandfather having this tea caddy. Now, he must have got on very well with your father. Is that correct? Yes. Because he left him the tea caddy with some coins in here. And it was always kept without ever being used to hold various things in there that were important. But he's brought it for you. And he's brought it now from the other side, all polished up, you see, it's polished up, and all clean inside, and they give it to you. And it is to tell you that when you thought once that nothing would ever, ever, ever come right for you, you can now see that where once the tin was empty, you can now feel that it's overflowing. Do you understand that? There was a period some years ago when you wondered whether you were going to make it or not. And you were faced with such a situation that you doubted the success even of yourself and those that were around with you. Come on. There has been many a time when you got on your knees and you have given yourself to God and said, God help me. And you've always said that in those moments you found a strength that you never thought you'd ever have. And it was that that pulled Yes. It's right, isn't it? Yes. yes, I know. Tom's here and he says so. Yes. And he's come to see it. Tom? And you know Tom. Yes, well, he's here. And he's just told me to tell you, oh, he's come with Henry, but never had Henry. He was always our Harry. Come on. Yes. Yes. And, and, um, uh, Harry has come to see you. Oh, he's come with someone by the name of Peel. That's the name, Peel. A uh, Mr. and Mrs. Peel. Um, yes, you do. You live somewhere at some time where you share the house. You must have had a house that was split in two in some way. Well, and if so, someone belonging there was named Peel. Did you buy it off someone named Peel, or have it off someone named Peel? Will you look back and have a look? There's someone named Peel has lived there. And I, I, to do with the house at the cliff. Do you understand that? Yes. Is your number 17? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Well, that's where they live. Because they've just shown me number 17. Do you understand that? Yes and uh, they want me to pass that on that you can understand. And they've just shown to me all saints. Yes, I live in all saints. Oh, well, there you are. Oh, and you live not far from the sea. Yes. In fact, you can go round, cross over two roads, and you're there. That's right. That's where they live. And they've just told me about it. So just be a nice little girl. <laughs> be happy. And uh, do only the things you know that are right for you. Thank you. And uh, you'll pull out of it very well. I just want me to just toss that to you. Um, I don't know if it's June or June, but it's here. Um, have you got a red scarf or something? Yes, are you, what are you? June. You're June. Okay. I couldn't make out whether it was June or June, June. you see here. Yeah. But that's where it is. There's a gentleman there, but he did say father to you, so it seems then that he must be your father. Yes. But could your mother be living? No. Oh, she's passed yes. over. Yes. She's not there, but he's talking about your mother. Yes. Now, 
don't take this wrong, but have you two mothers? Could there have been two people that you called mother? Um, who was Annie belonging to you? Um, it was way back, I don't know. Was, uh, in Could this have been a relative of your father's? Possibly, yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Well, was she in the house when you were a baby? Didn't she come to stay very close to you? I don't know anything. All right. Uh, I won't press it, but you, when you go across to the other side, I should already be there. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll follow it. Um, when you do, will you ask, you know, if you can see me? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ask an And uh, when you do, will you introduce me to the person that's here, so we can get it right, yeah. Yeah. The only way I can put it across to you, but I know we are going to meet again. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that will be helpful. Uh, you're a bit off the world, just, no, don't take that off. <laughs> you're a bit odd, I was just going to say. Yeah. Uh, by that, I mean, you say one thing, but you end up doing another. And, something else. That's correct. and um, in your home, you're always going to do this. And in some mysterious way, it never really gets done. Because you seem to not be able to get on with things as you've wanted to do so. Now, someone in here, and I'm sure it's them to do with your father, who says that you were brought up to know that if you don't do it yourself, you never get it done anywhere. Yeah. Come on. And you've said, my word, those words, my dad told me how true they are. Yeah. All right? Yes. Well, you know, don't you, that you should have changed your life ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you regret? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the other side, every time they see you, they go, <laughs> because they know very well how you talk to things and uh, things that have happened to you. Do you understand that? Good girl. Now they brought that to you. Do you remember Mrs. Moore? Yes. Because Mrs. Moore sends her best wishes to you. And there is also somebody here that says to me, tell her Teddy still loves her. Do you understand that? He said she never used to take me serious when I was here, but my word, she'll have to take me serious when she comes across. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. But will you remember that? Uh, do let me come in on this when you go across. But nevertheless, that's what's there. And I think they brought that feeling to me, you see here, uh, of good cheer. You've been speaking to someone, either named Sissy or Chrissy, I can't make out what it is, but you've got someone living now that could be Sissy or Chrissy. Pardon? Uh, um, friendship tie, not problem. Oh yes, no, that's all right. Yeah. But you've been talking to her. Yeah. And she's been talking to you about someone named Jim. Yeah. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Because I am to tell you that they're aware of this and uh, aware of the situation and there's a lovely dog. I've got you, darling. It's a girl dog. There's a little dog here, but it's a girly dog. Yeah. A girly dog. <laughs> well, little dog. It's a girl dog. And it's uh, what you call them. It's like um, um, a, a Russell. A Russell what? Russell, Russell Terrier. Terrier. A Russell Terrier. Terrier. Is it a Russell Terrier? Yeah. Yeah. A Russell Terrier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tom? Jack, Jack, Jack Russell. A Jack Russell. Yes, Jack Russell. <coughs> I can't think when I'm working. Um, now, you know about this dog somewhere. Yeah. It must have been that. But someone keeps on calling it Trixie. Would you know if they called a Trixie? I can't remember You can't. can't. Will you find out? Because there's a lady here and she's most indignant because she said, I was Trixie. But when they named the dog after me, Trixie, <laughs> I was very perturbed by this. But nevertheless, in the other world, yeah. the dog follows her, you see her around. <laughs> and so she's come here mostly to see you. Yeah. All right, keep your chin up and realize that you will come through this. Yeah. And do be happy and know that all is well. All right? Good girl. Uh, the lady next to you, I take it you know each other, but you're not relation. No. No. Because I got a gentleman, I was trying to make a relative between you, and he said, 
You're making a relative someone I don't even know. <laughs> no, here. And he was such a drawl, you know. Uh, so I don't know how to put this to you. He seemed to me as though he couldn't smile. I don't mean he couldn't smile, really. I mean that he couldn't sort of, um, everything that was uh, he said had a sort of double meaning. He couldn't sort of, how are you? Ooh, I suppose you aren't very well either. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, but he's with you at the moment, and um, he's, brought, he's brought a cap. And although he hasn't, <laughs> although he hasn't put it on, he's taking his cap off and he's holding it like this. And he said, they don't do this now when funerals pass. <laughs> we used to take our cap off and stand. And I'm sorry about this, but he always stopped at funerals. And he always wanted to know about them. <coughs> bit dreary. But he's got his cap off and he must say to me, you're dealing with the dead, you know. <laughs> like that. I hope you'll take it in the spirit that I'm giving it to you. Uh, but I can hear the name of Arthur as I'm talking to you. Yeah. You know who Arthur is, don't you? Now there must be a connection between the man I'm giving to you and Arthur. Is that right? Yeah. Pardon? They knew each other, yeah. Yes. Right. Well, that's what I have. Oh, and you knew someone named Watson, yeah. <coughs> yes, and also someone named Hughes, yeah. a family named Hughes, and you also had a gentleman, it couldn't possibly be this gentleman, that he'd never get, if he went into a public house, take him ages to get there, um, that used to go into a public house, and once they were there, <laughs> you never knew when they were coming out. No, <laughs> this other man I'd given to you, he wouldn't even go through the door. <laughs> it would take him too long. Do you know what I mean? He'd be chattering over things that didn't matter. The other one, he waits for the opportunity, dives in, and then you'd have to go and fetch him out. Yes. Come on. Yes. And he says, the trouble about him, there are none of those places that I remember up here. <laughs> And I'm quite sure that when he realised he was not dead, the first thing he asked for, where was the nearest? <laughs> anyway, I had to put it like that to you, because it's the only way I can describe it. But he's come along with John. So he says, I was to tell you that they were both together. Do you understand that? They are there, and sending their best wishes to you. And I also have the name of Vera, as I'm talking to you. So they have come there to see you and to give you their blessings and they want you to realise you've been very near at one period of being very ill. Yes. You've often wondered what would happen to you if you really were taken ill yes. because you've always had to look after the others yes. and you look around to find out there wouldn't be much use in time of trouble now. Exactly. Do you understand that? But I have to say to you, you know, God does look after us. And I do know from what I see that you've no need to worry about that. I'm sure that it will pick itself up. You've got to live now. Yes. And I want you to do so. Make the most of your life. And put as much into it as you can and get as much out of it as you can. Because you've put in too long. Now it's time you're benefiting from it. All right? I think you will. And you'll be able to uh, uh, be of uh, cheer. Do you know, honestly, we have some very strange people on the other side that come back sometimes. And I have a lady there, don't take this one, but are you wearing trousers? Yes. Do you know, she's objecting to you wearing trousers. I can understand that. And she's just said to me, why does she wear those things? Those are for men, <laughs> not for ladies. Well, she always believed yes. in having just pretty dresses and trying to make the best of yourself. And she said, you have legs for people to look at, not to hide. <laughs> now, will you remember that? Yeah. I have to tell you, you see, here. <laughs> because she's looking at you, must say she's got trousers on there, but then not for legs to take there. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't realize times have changed. So in heaven, don't go with trousers. <laughs> 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 well, all right.
<laughs> but I'm sure she was like that. Yeah. You understand? She just wishes to send her those wishes to you. Yeah. And has been in such an extraordinary way there. Yeah. But then that shows us that they don't, uh, uh, they come back as they were and as they knew. And uh, she still loves you. And sending her best wishes. Is it to Lily? Yes. She just said to me, I wish to give the best wishes to me. All right? Good. That's fine. Um, I have someone that is here, and it's somewhere where the lady is in green. Can I have your yes? Well, can I have your voice for a minute? Yes. That's right. Um, do you know someone living named David? Yes. Now, belonging to David, there must have been the passing of someone. Yes. And it's a lady. Is this correct? Just say, just say yes or no. If it's no, say no. No. All right, good. Now, why I'm saying that is that I have a lady there who wants me to comfort David. Yes. And it seems as though David has passed through some experience. I've got two contacts. That's fine. All right. Do you know St. Anne's? Not very well. Have you had a link with it in any way? No. Then I must be sure of what I've got there. Um, I keep getting something to do. I don't know whether it's with the grove or... I'm sure it's the grove. Probably the grove. <coughs> And someone trying to tell me about it. Do you know where this is a hotel or something? Yes. Or whatever it is, it's something of the grave. But there's a lady here that's passed over. And she keeps calling either Dorothy or Dorothea, but a name like that. Dorothea, Dorothea. Yeah. Mrs. Hopkins. Dorothea, Dorothea worked work for yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Now, then, is there a gentleman passed over belonging to this lady? To Dorothea. To Dorothea. Because there's a link here, you see, with someone that's calling Dorothea. Yes. But whatever it is, um, could this person be coloured in any yes, way? Yes, Because the person that is here has definitely got a colour, you see, no, here. No. Now, it's difficult for me to... I don't want to appear to be difficult about that or to... No. to but whatever it is, there should be something known about this. Yes. But it is Dorothea. Dorothea. I'm sure it is, with an A at the end. That's right. And it's something to do with this particular hotel. Yes. Now, wherever it is, it could probably be a prom or a promenade. Yes, right. But there could be north, south, I don't know if it's east or west, but right. I keep getting north and south. Yes. Here. Yes. Now, if this is so, there's a gentleman here that's trying to get to Dorothea. Yes. And trying to tell me that um, they want. Have you seen this person? Do you know I have? All right. Seen well, her. if not, then perhaps you'll keep in mind what I have. Yes. Sir. I don't want to lose the contact with the lady behind. Yes. Uh, and also, you have known someone that lived on North Promenade. Besides yes. this. Yes. Now, where is it that there was someone? that had something to do with the North Promenade that was either burned or there was an explosion, but there was something. Would you know that? Well, I have this, and I keep hearing the game David, you see here. So I got someone who said, well, where did I come from? Well, I felt it was here. All right, just hold on. Um, David. Um, it's... It's number 74, <coughs> and it's North Promenade. I keep getting this number. I'm sure it's 74. And I keep seeing a lady there, but they're talking about David, so there's a contact here. And it has been known also where this Dorothea was concerned. I'm sure that there would be a link in some mysterious way between this. So I'd like if you would, if you could probably have a chat afterwards to see what it is. Yes. Uh, but it's definitely something to do with either an explosion or burning, but there was something odd about this. Yes. 
and I felt that there would be something to do with the David. I don't get any other name at the moment, but I do know the spirit is trying to get through. Do you know the name of Hawley? Yes. Now you're sure about that? Healy. Healy. What? Hawley. Yes. Well, Mrs. Holton lives, lived at the Grove, but I know Healy. Oh, you do? All right. Well, I'm just getting... Well, no. I thought I got Hawley, so I don't change that. Uh, because it was definitely Hawley. And it was something to do with Alexandra Road. That's where Dorothea lives. Oh, well, that's it. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. Well, wherever it is, you'll find those names, you see, right. here. And they wanted me to pass that on, you see, here, so that I would uh, get there. And I'm quite sure that there is a link with this, because I heard Alexandra Road there. And they've come to you because they have said to me that there has been either a circle or a group that met together, and she used to talk to you. That's right. Is this correct? Yes. And they're telling me that there were contacts made in those days, yes. and that there are those that have passed over from those times that are remembering and bringing this back. Yes. And I'm quite sure there is need of something where Don is there concerned. Is. There is. You know that? Yes, I Well, do. that's yes. what it is. Thank and they you. wanted me to pass this I'll on make sure and to gets. tell you that they must be uh, told yes. and you will make sure yes. this is dealt with she and it will be understood. You can understand. I do. Yes. Will you tell her there and uh, tell her, give her the name of John? John. Because this will have some meaning there. Yes. And uh, I can't give the other because it probably won't make sense. It only makes sense. <laughs> sense to, uh, if I could get it direct. It, actually, you can put it down, something to do with carrots. But, um, carrots? Carrots, just carrots. And it will have some contact. Right. And smiling, because the man here is smiling about his <coughs> So I do know that he must have some meaning to it. Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. Good. Uh, do remember that. Okay. And uh, do understand that they are very close in that link there, oh, and close uh, to you. Now, can I just come to you now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, excuse me, are you carrying, or have you in your home, a gold watch chain that has belonged to a man in the spirit world? Yeah. And there was, I don't know what you call them, but there was a, yes. something dangling, That's hanging right. here, and it was on this, but it is gold. That's right. But I don't see the chain and the watch together. No. I see the chain, but not the watch. Yeah. So you should know something about it. I've only worn it this week. It's the charm bracelet made of my father's watch. Oh, well, there you are. But if they just asked me to tell you about oh, it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to bring you the blessings. Yes, I know. But can I just uh, come to you? Because I have a lady that she won't go until I've spoken to her about her. <coughs> but I'm quite sure she's linked up with you through a sister, with a sister. Because I seem to get someone that has been in the spirit world some time and um, has passed over there. Could even have passed over as a baby, you see here, but grown up now into womanhood. But she's with your mother see here. Yeah. Now, I feel that the two have come together only because you've been getting tired lately. Yeah. Do you understand that? And um, where at one time you seem to have enormous amount going on in your life. All right? Where your mind had to be alert. And now you don't seem to be bothered of what really is going on from day to day. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. Well, there's a gentleman here, and you know the Britannica books. Yes. Yeah. He tells me he always had Britannica <coughs> books. He could look things up uh, to do with knowledge, knowledge books, you yeah. see here. And he would always have an answer. And I'm quite sure this man went here, here, made, always made the, the um, um, what is it? made the business things, you know, ex um, did things, and um, was a man that would always um, make many decisions. He was a man that had to make decisions, yeah. because he had to prove to himself that he was good and that he could do these things. But he's come to see you, and he tells me 
uh, that things have, you sometimes think that things are running out for you, like life is running out and everything else is running out. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want you to take this to heart because he said you can remember good times and times that have meant something to you. And it overcomes the things that have brought you unhappiness as well. Do you follow that? Yes. Miss Cummings brought you there a lovely bunch of poppies. Why does he brought poppies? Uh, you must have known someone then that was killed in the war. And Remembrance Sunday must mean something to you. Yes. Pardon? Yes, I Because he's brought you poppies, you see here. Mm -hmm. And um, although they are significant to that, they also are uh, um, and, um, a meaning of importance and memory. What you have to do is that you've got to fulfill what you know you have to fulfill. You cannot pass away until you have reached that fulfillment and you've fulfilled your own life. Thank you. Do you understand yes, that? That's you. why they brought them to you. Be of good cheer. Is Easter mean something to you this year, the end of March? They've just shown to me Easter. Has it got any memory? Does the end of March mean anything to you? Birthday. A birthday. But whatever it is, they tell me the tumors watch there. All right. Now we're finished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we do thank you for your because I think it's been a lovely afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Dean. The collection will now be taken. We have come to the close of our service. It has been good to be in thy house, and we know that our loved ones have been with us. We have felt that oneness with thee, and we pray that that power from whom all blessings flow will be with each and every one as they part to wend their ways home. Keep them safe until we all shall meet again. Amen. Amen. Find the best for the cover of your table.